Well, hello everyone once again. Welcome back to Junk Shop Libraries Improv Bible Study. We turn today to the fifth chapter of Exodus, which hopefully won't be as weird and gross as the last one was. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you must not have your notifications on. Chapter 5. And afterward Moses and Aaron went in, and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, The God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days' journey into the desert, and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence, or with the sword. <clears throat> Pardon me. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works get you unto your burdens? And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick as heretofore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. And the taskmasters of the people went out, and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus saith Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go ye, get you straw where ye can find it, and yet not aught of your work shall be diminished. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily tasks, as when there were straw. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten, and demanded, Wherefore have ye not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today as heretofore? Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servants? There is no straw given unto thy servants, and they say to us, Make brick. And behold, thy servants are beaten, but the fault is in thine own people. But he said, Ye are idle, ye are idle. Therefore ye say, Let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. Go therefore now and work, for there shall be no straw given to you, yet shall ye deliver the tale of bricks. And the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in evil case after it was said, Ye shall not minish aught from your bricks of your daily task. And they met Moses and Aaron, who stood in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. And they said unto them, The Lord look upon you and judge, because ye have made our savor to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of his servants, to put a sword in their hand to slay us. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? For since I come to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to this people. Neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. And that's Exodus chapter 5. Wherein the Lord does not have to harden Pharaoh's heart, as he said earlier he was going to have to do, because apparently Pharaoh is a jerk. Pharaoh, not one who's familiar with Moses, except perhaps by reputation, has these, these two Hebrew fellas roll up to his house from out of the desert, and they say, we talked to an invisible man in a burning bush on Magic Mountain, and he says we're to gather your entire workforce and take them three days' journey into the desert to make sacrifices on top of the Magic Mountain, and we promise we'll be right back. Pharaoh says, the heck you say? He turns to his overseers and says, um, you reckon they'd have time to be planning this, this week-long sacrificing excursion into the middle of the desert? If they had enough work on their plates? All right, we've been supplying them straw 
for the bricks that they've been set to make to save time. They got time on their hands, do they? So he says, we're going to make your lives much more difficult by adding tasks, and yet we're not going to reduce your quota at all. Anyone who's ever worked more than about three days in retail or the distributive trades of any kind knows this mindset. The overseer comes to you and says, um, we're going to take away everything that makes your job easy. We're going to require you to do it in a way that takes two or three times as long, and we want the same amount of work done in the same amount of time. And don't grouse about it. Well, so the Hebrews have to go out into the field trying to find straw or straw substitutes. And when they start slowing down, the taskmasters come to them and say, Pick up the pace, you lazy good-for-nothings. They say, We don't have any straw. They said, Pharaoh said not to give you straw. They say, well, and Pharaoh's going to have to make do with a few less bricks, I tell you that. And once the same stuff done, he's going to have to keep on giving the straw. And they put together a delegation, a union, as it were, and send the delegation to Pharaoh and say, look, you can have the same amount of bricks in the same amount of time using the same materials. Or you can have less amount of bricks in the same amount of time with a different supply of materials. But you cannot have the same amount of bricks in the same amount of time with more steps and less material. And Pharaoh says, I am the God King Pharaoh. Just tend to it. People go back to Moses and Aaron saying, you remember when you rolled up in here a couple of days ago with this whole let my people go nonsense? Well, not only hadn't we been let go, but we've had our workload functionally doubled and they're starting to beat us. You stink. Wish you'd go back into the desert where you belong, apparently. The sun baking your brains out. And then Moses turns to the Lord and says exactly the same thing. He says, you're the one who sent us out here with this let my people go nonsense. And we came and we let my people go unto Pharaoh. But he ain't let my people go. In fact, he's starting to beat them and I'm afraid they're going to start dying. Yep. And true to the form of this book, we don't find out what the Lord said unto Moses until the next chapter. So y'all will just have to tune back in for Exodus chapter 6, which should be along just real shortly. Hit those thumbs up if, if you like what you're seeing. Uh, check out the rest of the playlist, uh, Genesis and Exodus. This will probably be the last time I link uh, both of the two, because that end screen is starting to look a little cluttered. And poke the Pope. Make sure to subscribe. Y'all take care. Be safe. And come back and see us.